99% of beginners don't know these basics about Bricks Builder and what makes Bricks Builder so great. The way Bricks Builder does query loops is next level and it is going to ruin you once you understand how it works. At the end, I'll show you a quick tip about how CSS frameworks work and you'll never go back. So I built out a service custom post type in both Elementor and in Bricks and gave them each an archive page. They don't look quite the same, but they're, they're serving the same purpose. We've got a hero section. And then what we want is the loop below with the query for the service custom post type. And then every service we add will show there. So the problem with Elementor's templates is that if I go ahead and pick a template, let's say we want to use this here grid of blocks in our template, we'll go ahead and import it. And the inherent structure of it prevents you from making it dynamic and using it as a product loop without a significant amount of work. And in Bricks Builder, this is deadly simple, and I'm going to show you how that's done in a minute. The problem with Elementor templates is that once they're imported, you'll see the structure here where everything is in a separate container and is literally static text. You can type in new content if you want it, but you can't make this design dynamic short of adding a new section to your page, bringing in the loop builder or the uh, loop grid into it, and then creating a template copying this design into it, relinking the text into to, for this to the post type, uh, for the custom post type title and the custom post type content and image. And then you're left dealing with the padding and the uh, hover effects that we're seeing here with the nice backdrop with the drop shadow, the spacing, the padding, you need to rebuild everything you see. So the template was a nice idea and it was inspiration, but it's not actually useful. You can't even use it to build because it will only let you do static text. In Bricks Builder, this works very differently. It's very simple and very fast. How this works in Bricks is that from our archive page template, which is going to go to templates, I'm going to load my frames templates and choose the features uh, sections and I'm looking through here I'm looking just for a simple grid similar to what we had in Elementor here are some and I'm going to use this one here so we insert it and what you'll see is that out of the box it does exactly what the Elementor template did it created six cards inside the grid they're static and not much is different. But here is what is different. We can go ahead and delete the five cards here, click the one that's left, turn on query loop, set a query, and choose is main query, save this, go back to our archive, and we have a loop query that works with the design. You'll see that there's seven cards here because we have seven posts and we need to just go through here, relink the data and our job is done. So I'm going to go and do that now. So now that we have the query working, we're going to highlight the text. Actually, we're just going to delete it out of the text block here. I'm going to go hit the lightning bolt for dynamic data. We're going to put in the query variable for custom for the post title. And then we're going to search for the image, which is here. We're going to delete it, hit the lightning bolt again, and search for feature image, which is going to get the feature image of our custom post. It's previewing differently from a different custom post type, so don't get thrown off by that. We can, I think we can change that in the template settings when we populate the content. Not sure if it lets me choose a custom post type to preview, but regardless, when I get to the front end, I have my actual information here. Um, I'm gonna go back, add some padding to this here. Um, margin top, large, 
save this and we'll come back. And our job is done. Using bricks with the frames templates, we were able to import a template, actually make it useful by connecting it to dynamic data and the exercise in Elementor using the loop, uh, the loop grid, what is this? The loop grid widget would have worked and done the same thing, but it would have been like probably 45 or 50 minutes of work to really, really get this thing looking the way we want. Where in Bricks Builder, whatever the design is, we just like, it took it exactly as it was and turned it into a query. All right, guys, I promise you a bonus tip and here we go. I'm going to show you what a CSS framework is. You may have heard about them or seen or read about them. And they're like some abstract concept that doesn't make a lot of sense. This here is exactly what they're good for. I have made a section with a container in it and it has a three column flex grid in it, a grid in it. And I've put a heading and some text into the first block. Now, when we are building content in Elementor that repeats and we want to change something like a background color, we end up having to go through the whole site and everywhere we use the color, we need to change it or if it was styling like padding or background images and we need to go through the site, find every spot where we did it, make the change and make the adjustment short of global fonts and colors, obviously. So here is what I want to show you. In Bricks Builder, we can make a class simply by clicking up here and writing a class name. And I'm going to call it uh, background test. Hit enter. And now we're writing a class and we're going to say that we're going to just give it a simple background color. And I'm going to use a very different color than we're using in our site. And we're also going to give it some padding. Here is another uh, use for a CSS framework uh, like this. We can use variables and instead of remembering uh, class or remembering actual values, we can use a nice spacing framework. And now if I make another block inside this container, uh, I'm going to make one manually just to show you the process, give it a heading and rich text inside it. And you will see that the styling did not copy over from this block to, to the next block, but we can simply add the class to the block level. It was called a BG. So we'll click up here. I'm going to go search it bg test apply it and there we go we have consistent styling now i can duplicate it and i have three now i'm going to change my mind and we want more padding at the top so i choose any one of the three blocks go into the class i wrote and give it space large at the top small at the bottom and we change our mind on the color and we rightly decide that we should use something that matches our brand and there we go you have an easy way consistently style stuff this is not just within this page this is across your entire site if you use this class in any element anywhere you would uh, get consistency throughout your design and this is what CSS frameworks are good for. Hey guys, I hope you liked this video. Please like and subscribe for more content like this. It really does help me out. Thanks for watching.